And then Sunday, I'm sitting on the airplane coming back, and there's this full page ad in the New York Times. Full page ad. I mean, I wrote all over it, so you know. Uh, and you won't get the. This is a printout of it because the newspaper got wet, and I had to throw it away because wet newspaper you can't even recycle. It's uh, useless. Can't even send a Luca Brasi sleeps with the. Fi- can't do anything with a wet paper. They ought to laminate that paper, use it over and over again. That paper. But anyway, this man, his name's Josh Tetrick. I'll tell you who he is in a minute. He put a full-page ad in the Sunday Times, which has got to be like $200,000. Seriously, it's a lot to put a full-page ad. Hey, somebody send me $200,000. I'll put a full-page ad for this show. That's all we need. And then we're off. We're off and running. And we're doing okay, but not good enough. Remember, I got to sell that book. That's what this is about. (laughs) But he put a full-page ad, 200 grand, right? And it had a big font, Dear Donald, so that you would look at it. And then he wrote, and it's, this was like 129 words. That's the whole thing, that he spent $200,000. So, you know, he had to really want these words in the paper. He had to really, really, really commit to what he was about to say and put his money where his mouth is. And this is, you know, I do it too. I put my money where my mouth is. I need you to put your money where my mouth is. <laughs> but this was amazing to me. A full page ad, and he wrote, Dear Donald, Americans are frustrated and angry and scared. You've channeled this into your nomination. Americans are also good. We're generous and courageous and kind, and that's what you've missed. A single mom in Birmingham who taught her son how to rise while respecting women. The Toledo auto workers fighting to protect the jobs of their immigrant brothers and the families of faith in Little Rock who believe in lowering taxes without lowering their values. This is who we are and this is why your campaign will break down. Your campaign doesn't just seem wrong, it feels un-American. To support it would make me less of myself, less of my grandpa's grandson, Less of my mom's son. Turning away from you is a way to say who we are. That's all it said. And then he signed it, Josh Tetrick, and put his real phone number in the New York Times. 415-404-2372. 415-404-2372. He put his real phone number in there and even included uh, a paren with the number one in case you were calling from Germany on a magic jack. Yeah, swear to God. Amazing. Now, who is this guy? This guy is a guy who is trying to revolutionize the food industry by providing clean food. He's, he's got this thing. He, he, he just got sued because... He wanted to call his mayonnaise, which is egg-free for vegans, he wanted to call his mayonnaise just mayo. And the, uh, the, the food companies decided to sue him because they say mayo means eggs. You can't have mayonnaise without an egg. And that he was uh, taking away their business So he got sued by members of the American Egg Board, the Egg Lobby. Yeah, the Egg Lobby. Howard, do you represent the Egg Lobby? Just tomatoes, right? Okay. Yeah, he represented the tomato lobby. (laughs) He was the tomato. No, but the Egg Board and the Egg Lobby. um, And uh, the the, um, Unilever. Now, I know you know who the... Who the head lawyer is that? Unilever, right? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, your your friend decided, you know, because he's he was representing Hellman's, at right at Unilever, and uh, so he sued Hampton Creek, which is this company that Josh Tetrick owns, because he dared to make egg free mayo. (laughs) Swear to God. So that got me thinking about last week, you know, when they voted on um, the, the uh, genetic, genetically modified foods and they said, you know, uh, that they don't have to label the food if it's genetically modified. So I'm thinking that's a good thing 
because now if you don't genetically modify, you could put that on your label and then organic farmers and people who do things the correct way can have a new business. <laughs> and you can thank Josh Tetrick, who I doubt is a Democrat, only because of the way he phrased the tax thing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't know what his politics are. I just will say that he put his money where his mouth is, and that's rare. So uh, Josh Tetrick, uh, you know, he owns Hampton Foods, who are, and he's trying to clean up the food business. He's trying to make good, clean, wholesome food, uh, food for vegans who, you know, don't want any egg products or don't want uh, dairy products in their dairy, which is, you know, your choice. <laughs> My sister was a vegan, just so you know. I know, okay, I'm not. But my sister was a vegan and she used to say, <laughs> I swear to God, she used to come up to me and hug me and she goes, ew, I could smell the dairy on you. <laughs> Vegans can smell the dairy on you. Apparently it's offensive. Uh, so Josh Tetrick decided to start a business with, uh, you know, mayo. That's egg free. He's entitled to do this. You would think it's a free country. He actually won this lawsuit, I have to say. But um, he is he, he did get sued by Unilever, maker of Hellman's. And he did get sued by the egg, uh, the egg lobby. Um, but just so you know, he has a new just mayo label and it includes a definition of the word just yeah, because he wanted justice, right? So he said, instead of, you know, you thinking what you want to think, I'm going to tell you what I meant by just mayo. I meant guided by reason, justice, and fairness. So as long as he puts that on the label, he's got himself a new, uh, a new uh, you know, niche in the marketplace. So I'm thinking if you were, like, really upset about the the... the, the genetically modified crap, then do what a lot of the farmers in uh, New England do and create an entire organic business. Create products that say organic, free of pesticides, free of GMOs, you know, free of all the... And, and you know, make yourself a niche, make yourself a market. Let me tell you, one of the things I loved about being up there is all of that farm fresh stuff. I loved that, you know, everything was grown locally and sold locally and organic and tasted better. Because I will tell you one thing I learned about living in Costa Rica, their food tastes so much better than ours. Our food is so horrendous and you don't know it until you leave. When you leave here and you go eating abroad, <laughs> no, Melania, that's not aimed at you. But when you go abroad and you start eating their food, you realize our food is trash. Our food tastes terrible. Our chicken, you know, I like chicken. I eat chicken a lot. But I, I got to say, our chicken, after eating chicken around the world, tastes like a sponge. Our chicken is so grotesque. And they're huge like a chicken breast does not look like what you think it looks like it's much much smaller and much more delicious it's so different everything is different food around the world is so good and food here is just crap 20 after <laughs>